Welcome back to part five of getting the old sporty 40 back on the road. You know, last week we did our swinging pedals and caliper brackets. Well, let's continue on with the brakes, get that done. We got plenty more to do, so let's get busy. Well, it's about 11 o'clock at night. As you can see, it's pretty dark out there. Yes, sir. Uh, it's been unbearable this week. I'm telling you, it's been so hot. And today I got up and, well, I just said, I, <laughs> I ain't doing it. No, sir. It got up to 97 today and humidity through the roof. It's just, it's unbearable. So I decided to spend all day over at Mama's in the basement, cool basement, working on another project that's not related to the channel. And whilst I was over there, I managed to make me some space ores right there. Remember how I used whooshers on my caliper brackets right here? Uh, well, I'm, gonna use, I'm gonna put them spacers there. Hopefully they'll work. Um, anyway, we'll do that in a little bit. Also got my my new rotor right there. I'll have to send that one back to rock a toe. Um, but you might be wondering, why are you starting at 11 o'clock at night? Well, I've decided next two or three days, I'm gonna work a little bit of third shift because it's just so hot, yeah. Uh, I think uh, after today's, what, Thursday? I think after Saturday, it's supposed to cool back off in the low 80s, and that'll be wonderful. So until that happens, I'm going to work a little bit of third shift because it's, it's just too hot. I think what we'll start with right now, we need to get this finished. I need to make me a clevis like this for the clutch side. we got to drill us a hole, make that clevis, make us a rod, thread it, weld us a nut on the clevis. We're done with that. Then I need to weld this up. Then... Let me get it over here in the car, get it bolted, get all the holes drilled, and uh, then we'll move on to something else. Um, probably mounting the motor next, uh, because, well, I want to do that before I do the steering, like I told y'all last week. Speaking of, my, my steering rack come in today. It's right over under that big long box. You know, I was going to use that one uh, out of the Fairmont station wagon. Well, we can't. I'll explain that later. But for now, let's, uh, let's work on these brakes a little bit more, get them done. All right, here is my thinking. Here's what's going on in my little pea brain. Uh, you know, we need to copy this little clevis. Well, I got this metal here. It's it's pretty thick. I don't know if that's an eighth. Yeah, it's probably an eighth inch. What I'm gonna do, this is an inch wide, and then it's like two and a half, two and a half, and then one. So I'm gonna cut this uh, one inch wide by, we'll go seven-ish, give us enough. And we'll bend it, you know, make us a clevis right here. And then this is half inch rod. I'm gonna cut a piece of it off. I don't know, like a foot. And with this rod here is, well, it's a little under three eighths. Uh, I'll stick this in a lathe and turn it down to three eighths. If I don't have any three eighths rod over at Mama's, I'm not sure, I'll have to go and see. But that's the plan right now. And uh, I will weld a nut. I don't know if that's got a nut welded, yeah. Weld a nut on the bottom, you will thread this one end of it. And uh, then we'll put it all together. Hopefully that'll work. So let me cut this. Let me cut a piece of this off and then we'll head to Mama's and see if we got three eighths. If not, we'll turn this down real quick. All right, here's my brake press right here. <laughs> I wish I had a little small brake press. That would be nice. Let me get me a squar, make sure I'm squar. Oh yeah, eyeballed it and it's dead on. I need an anvil for sure. I gotta change my dice out on my brake press. <laughs> Ooh. I doubt that's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. Ah. Hitting my clamp. 
Oh, 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 dad, gum that hurt. Oh, yeah. Already got that shaped. Eh. <laughs> Good enough for what I'm doing. I'm trying to figure out, I gotta bend it right here at this mark. I gotta bend it out and then squish it together where it'll, it'll match that clutch pedal. I think if I do this right here, in case y'all haven't noticed, I'm not a, not a metal worker, metal shaper, whatever you wanna call it. Ooh, I'm gonna try this right here and see what it does. Oh yeah, actually did pretty good. Let me do this other side real quick. Oh yeah, that's tight. Now, see what I'm talking about? I think if I squish this together down here, it'll be, well, it might work. <laughs> Let's see real quick. Let me change my brake press back to a vise. Squish this like this right here. Oh, nope, that ain't gonna work. Let me go down. Let's put it in there like this right here, see what happens. We're getting there. Well, it's a little cocky. <laughs> Let me work with this, see if I can straighten it up a little bit better than what it is. That's better than it was. I hate that this bend right here ain't as sharp as this one, but I think this worked. Let's put it on the pedal and just see how it fits. All right, I spread it out a little bit more so it'll fit on that pedal. I think it'll be just fine and dandily. So, you gotta drill a hole through this through here, put one here, weld a nut, and we'll be done with this. And then we can go over to Mama's and turn that down. Well, apparently, I broke my 3 8 drill bit sometime or another. I don't want to go the next size up. You know, I want it you know, fit fairly tight. So let's go on to Mama's. I'll steal a drill bit from over there, and we'll turn this down to 3 8 Go ahead and put threads on it, and then we'll come back over here. Well, as you can see, I didn't have any 3 8 so I'm having to turn that half inch down to 3 8 As soon as I get that done, I'm going to thread probably two inches of it. Then we'll head back to the house. All right, I got her turned down to 375 by thousands. Well, actually, it was 400 down here and 380 down here. I'm telling you, this laser wore out. I can catch my fingernail on the way right there. It's so wore out. And the tail stock, it probably needs a little adjusting too. But anyway, I might fool that sometime. Um, what I ended up doing, I'm gonna thread two inches on this end. So I just made sure this end is 375 thousandths. It is, so I'm gonna scoot it back in the chuck here. We're gonna put the, the die on it, cut us some threads, and we'll go back to the house. Well, that ain't gonna close up on that. Well, I guess we'll go to the vise. How about that? All right, that ought to be plenty. All right, we are back at the shop, and yes, I did forget to uh, bring these. Had to turn around and go back and get them. Uh, anyway, let's drill this out. Let's drill that out. Well, it's a nut on there. Let me find me a 3 8 nut real quick. All right, now it is time to drill us a hole in this here clutch pedal. Um, this is what they call pedal ratio. And I think what it is, is you go from center of your pivot point to the center of your foot pad. And then from the center of your pivot point to the center of this pivot point and figure up your ratio. And you know, manual brakes, you, want, you don't want this hole that way. You want, you want it kind of that way. 
it gives you a little more leverage, you know, from here to here is a longer lever, e easier to push on it. Anyway, I'm, I don't, I ain't done no maths. I'm just gonna match it up with this brake pedal. If it ain't good enough, well, we'll take it out and redrill it. But anyway, I come up with two and a quarter center here to center there. That's what we're gonna drill this. Let me give y'all a little tip on drilling stuff. Sometimes I forget to do it. But if you got a piece long enough and you can, rest it against that. Because if that ever catches, which with this little drill bit, it'd probably just snap it. But a bigger drill bit, if it ever hangs, it'd hit that right there and stop. If you got it, say like over here, well, she's gonna come around and whack. That hurts, I've had it happen before. So just remember, rest it on the left side of your pole there. Well, there's my clevis. Yes, sir. It is not symmetrical. No, sir. <laughs> but I think it'll do just fine and dandily. Um, I'm gonna wait and cut this rod off after we get this in the car and I can, you know, get a better measurement. Same thing with that. May have to make one for that. I don't think so, but we'll just see. Right now, I wanna drill, um, not up here, but down here, a couple of holes at the top to help, you know, mount it to the firewall. And then I'm gonna weld this up and then we'll be ready to put it in the car. That's what I've been trying to do for two or three days now. fun part I'm trying to get this thing up in here because so it's not it ain't real light no sir I got to get her in place then I got to mark a hole some kind of way I was hoping this clamp might work through here look at there that might actually help oh yeah that helps out a bunch that firewall ain't flat. It sure ain't. It's gonna be when I'm done. <laughs> All right, let me get this leveled up best I can. I'm gonna probably just eyeball it because the car ain't level, so I can't use a level. I think this needs to come down about right there. Tell you what, let me measure, do a little measuring. From hither to yon, it's roughly two inches to that bend over here that ain't bad i need to go yonder way far as i can that is for sure all right fellas i think i got it pretty level best i can tell anyway i'm gonna drill the first hole really hope that we are level here we go Let me get a bolt in that real quick. We got two bolts in, so let's take this clamp off. next I'll drill these four holes and then these two and uh, get a bolt in somewhere where it'll be stable then we'll knock these two big holes out there's one let me get that bolted down all right let me drill the rest of them out real quick Let me get a bolt in over here and then we'll start on them big holes. Alright, let me get my hole saw. We'll cut them big holes out. I got my hole saw and I took the drill bit out of the middle. 
That way we can get lined up on the hole that's already here instead of having to eyeball that drill bit. Let's see if I can't get it drilled out. <laughs> I ain't gonna do it with this one. Let me get my corded drill. All right, I got my wrist breaker 9000 right here. Let's see if we can't make it cut. Made light work of that. Ow. All right, that is done. I think it's time to put some master cylinders in. What do y'all think? All right, now comes the fun part. I'm hoping that bolt will stay in place. I got it held with a magnet. Oh yeah, that'll work. Once I get these tightened up, I'll drag that welder over here and we will weld them bolts in place. So we don't have to worry about that no more. All right, there's one. Let me get the other three. Clutch master cylinder is in. Let's do the brake next. Yes, sir. All right, I've got them bolted up. Let's put the pedals in, see what they look like. All right, here comes the fun part. Getting all this put together. All right, where's the brake pedal? You get out of the way. Oh, I'm getting cramped. Oh, I'm getting cramped. Oh, yeah. Man, it hurts. Oh. Finally. With well, the is, we now have swinging pedals in the old 40. I could have swore this rod on the brake was going to be close, but it's not. I, mean, I got maybe two inches here. It's supposed to be out about seven. That's what my measurement was on the others. Of course, this will be the same way. So we got to make a rod for both of them. Yes, sir. Uh, that ain't nothing big, but that don't look too bad, I don't think. Let's get out here and look at the master cylinders real quick. Well, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that came from the factory. Yes, sir. Looks pretty doggone good to me. I want to weld these bolts to it. That way, if I ever have to change either one of these, I ain't got to fight them bolts trying to hold them and get the nut started. Yeah, that's aggravating. I ain't going to do that tonight. We'll do that tomorrow. I think what we're going to do now is let's put my spacers on and get that get this new rotor on right here and see what that looks like. You know what I have forgotten about? I got to have a different size spacer for this steering arm over here on this side. Sure do. It's always something, always something else you got to do. All right, is it warped? Oh no, it's just straight as it can be. Awesome. Let me get this caliper on. Well, we have a problem. <laughs> Steering arm's in the way, I can't get this bolt in. That ain't something to tell the captain right there. Always something, always something, always something. Well, I have struck out on the brakes tonight. Sure have. Um, there's my new clearance right there between the brake pad and the bracket. But then you look over here between the bracket and the caliper, I ain't got hardly no clearance. So I should have made them spacers a quarter inch. So I'll have to remake them. That's good. <laughs> then my bottom bolt. You know, I, have, I haven't put the steering arm on until just now. Well, my bottom bolt, it won't go in. Steering arm's in the way. Uh, you got to put the steering arm on before you put the rotor on because of, you know, where the bolts are. So 
I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I got to do a little thinking on that. Um, it's almost 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm getting a little tired. So I think I'm going to go in the house and, well, I'll ponder on this a little bit. and uh, Maybe I'll figure something out on that boat tomorrow. Well, it is the next night. And let me tell you, I have started a little early. It's about 9 o'clock and it's, yeah, it's miserable. I should have waited a couple more hours, but I'm already out here. Might as well get started. Um, I spent last hour or so where mom was making my new spacers. These are 200 by thousands. These are 575. Remember those, the one here on the front bottom steering arm had to have one bigger. Well, that's it right there. Um, for whatever reason, I thought them washers were 250 thousands. And that's why I went to 300 thousands. Uh, no, sir. I was wrong. They were 200 thousands, 210 somewhere in there. So that's what we're going to go with right here. Let me put them on real quick, and uh, I don't know what we're going to do next because, well, I'll just tell you, I am unprepared for tonight. If y'all ain't figured it out yet, I, I am just absolutely terrible at planning stuff. Yes, sir. Always have been. Uh, we'll find something to piddle on. we got to work on the push rods for the pedals, and uh, we may pull the back wheels off and look at those brakes, see if I can't figure out what they are and what I need to order for some, you know, brakes on the back. But anyway, let me let me get these spacers on right here real quick. Well, I got my spacers in, as you can see, but that's all I got on because, well, I've completely forgot about not being able to put this bottom bolt on. And it don't like much. Well, let's get you down here eye level with it. It don't like much. Um, the only solution I can come up with is to heat this steering arm right here and bend it down it probably don't need to go a quarter inch, half inch at the most. That's the only way I know to fix it. So let me get the torch out, drag it over here, and we'll heat this up and bend it real quick. I got to get this tie rod in loose first. So I can slip me a piece of pipe up here and bend her down a little bit. Been a long time since that feller's been loose. Messed that nut up for sure. Dang. Well, let me heat that up real quick. There she went. Get out of here. Now let me go find me a piece of pipe, slip up over here, and we'll go to heating that up, bend it just a little bit. <laughs> Alright, let me measure this and see where we're at, because I don't want to go no more than a half to. We are at approximately 13 and a half inches to the top. I'm going to bend her a quarter inch, and we'll see what happens. Measure that real quick. Dad on 13 and a quarter. Let me see if the bolt will go. No, sir. We gotta go some more. All right, I'm gonna let that cool off because it's really, really hot. Then we'll put everything back together and then we'll go over yonder and uh, do the same thing. Put it at 12 and 7 eighths. All right, will she go, will she go? 
Oh yeah, just barely, I mean. But she does go. Let me get these tightened up real quick. Well, as you can see, there's the bolt. Yes, sir, it went right in. It rubs just a tiny amount, but hey, if it goes in, that's all I'm worried about. But I will tell you this, I'm very perplexed about something. I went over to that side whilst I waited on this side to cool and put my spacers in there and uh, stuck that caliper up there just to see. And well, the bolt went right in. Uh, that steering arm is way lower than this and I can see it from here. It's, I bet you it's a half inch more lower. Uh, let's go over and measure it and just see where it's at. Well, I just measured it and it is at 12 and a quarter roughly. That over there is 12 and 7 eighths. So that's more than a half inch that this dropped down. And I've done measure the frame. The car's sitting level, so that's odd. I wonder if it got bent, one of them got bent over the years, or was manufacturing that bad back in 1940. I don't know. I was glad we don't have to heat that. I don't like heating stuff up like that, but, you know, sometimes you have to. Anyway, uh, we got all that situated. And, uh, well, you can see the space here between this brake pad and right there, the bracket and the caliper are about equal. So my spacers, dead on. This and over here is the same way. Let me get over here and I'll show you. See that space between the pad and the bracket and then the caliper and the bracket? Pretty much exactly the same. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, now that we got that straightened out, let's get in here and get our rods on our pedals, get them uh, measured out and adjusted and all that. All right, I got my brake pedal adjusted and I got my seven inches from the firewall. Now, well, it's a little bit more actually. It's probably about seven and a half. It'll be all right. Um, once I get a, you know, a seat in here, I might have to do a little more adjusting on it. But now we need to cut this here rod with a clutch. I think I'm gonna do about six and a half inches. Then I need to round the end of it. And then we'll go ahead and hook her up. Do not try this at home. Uh, you could tell your grinder up or you could hurt yourself. I've got a bench grinder somewhere. I gotta try to find it tomorrow and mount it on this table or somewhere. Let's get this rod and this clutch. See if we can't get it adjusted. The pedal will be way up there. I think that's a little bit long. I may have made this rod too long. That'll be about right there. That's still a little high, and my threads are hitting my pedal now. I'll tell you what. Let me cut a little bit off of this, probably, I don't know, a good half inch. I'll be right back. All right, let's give it another try. I see we're a little bit closer. All right. Approximately there. Let me get my bolt. Go ahead and stick that in. That's pretty close to the uh, brake pedal there. We'll leave it there for now. Like I said, once I get a seat in here, we may have to do a little more adjusting. All right, let's run through the gears real quick. Here's my gear shifter. Y'all ready? We're in first. We're gonna take off. Whom, whom. All right, let me show y'all this real quick. She's a flexing. I don't know if y'all can see that. But that firewall is a flexing and I just noticed it looks like it's cracked right here. What in the devil? Uh, let's go around uh, outside. Look at that real quick. That don't look very good. Also, I forgot all about my brake light switch. This arm was on it. I took it off. Well, I just put it back on. We'll have to make us a bracket. Come down here and hold our brake light switch right here. Anyway, let's get out there and look at that firewall. I don't know if y'all can see it or not. Right there, she is sure enough cracked. I'll have to weld that up and we'll definitely have to put us a brace from that pedal assembly to the uh, dash. Yep, that ain't worth a crapola there. Anyway, it's just something else we gotta work on. Well, I just spent about 45 minutes cleaning this nasty place up. Man, there was 
grinding dust all over the place. Anyway, I think now I was fixing to put the front wheels on. Those S10 wheels, well, they don't fit. Um, it hits this lip right here on the rotor. So I'm going to have to find some different wheels because when I go to putting the motor back in there, you know, to, to work on the motor mounts or whatnot, I want the weight on it like it's going to be. Uh, I have to find some wheels. I think right now, let's pull the back wheel off, look at them brakes, and I'm going to have to study the rear end. And we got to figure out, you know, what I got here so I know what parts to buy. How bad are we going to have to fight these to get them off? Well, I don't think I'm going to have to. It's just about off now. Let me get some utensils. We'll pry that off. Ta -da! Well, that really didn't tell me a whole lot. <laughs> I mean, they sort of look like regular brakes. These little spring alangas right here, though, that's kind of weird looking. Ain't never seen that before. Um, mainly what I need is a wheel cylinder and the shoes. Um, I'm going to take a picture of it, start doing a little research when I get in the house. I'm going to take some pictures of the rear end there, too. And maybe I can figure out what this is, um, and then I'll be able to buy, buy some parts. But I tell you what... Um, I'm feeling a little rough tonight. I got a brace on this knee right here. That joint feels like it's trying to separate. And, uh, well, my neck, shoulders are killing me too. I hate to, you know, whine, but <laughs> it feels like somebody got me in a headlock tried to rip my head off. So I think I'm going to call her early tonight and uh, go on in the house and, and rest a little bit. And then tomorrow we'll figure some stuff out here. Well, it is the next day again. And I am braving the heat today, as you can see. It's, it's daylight. Uh, I ain't going to stay out here long, but I just couldn't sit in the house to do nothing. I was wondering about these <laughs> brakes, so got it tore apart. That, that is an 11-inch drum. Those are like an inch and 800 and something thousandths wide, the shoes are. And I got the uh, wheel cylinder off. Let me show you what I got. It says Wagner Lockheed, and then on the other side, it's got a D-4605. So now that we know that, and I know what size my shoes are, I believe we're gonna go in the house do a little research. Pretty sure we can find out what we need. Well, it is the third and hopefully the final night of working third shift. Uh, actually, a few hours ago, we had a storm come through and dropped the temperature 20 degrees in about 30 minutes, yes sir. It feels much, much better right now than it has last, well, all week basically. Uh, anyway, what I plan on doing tonight is, well, not a whole lot. <laughs> my nephew's coming over here in a minute. He's bringing his old Jeep. Um, it's got a death wobble like you wouldn't believe. And it's going to get him killed if we don't fix it. So we're going to pull the whole, he's going to pull it in right here. we got to pull the whole front axle out and do a bunch of stuff to it and put it back in. So it's probably what I'll be working on mostly tonight um, and Monday uh, because we won't get that done tonight. Uh, ain't going to work on it tomorrow because tomorrow's Sunday. Sunday's the day of rest. That's what I plan on doing. But if I do work on this tonight, what I'd like to do Get the motor, well, get the bell housing and transmission on the motor. Get it set in here, put the old motor mounts back on. And, well, firstly, i got to get the steering box out and the old brake clutch stuff. Get that out and a few other things. Set that motor in here, and then we got to go to working on motor mounts and transmission mounts. Like I said, I don't know if I'll get much of it done tonight, but I'm going to try to. We'll just have to wait and see. There's Juan. Well, I got the smallest pry bar I could. <laughs> <laughs> the art is. There's a little bracket right here. Got a little pivot right here and here. I don't know if that's for the clutch or, or what. But it must go. Blame, that hurts. Ooh, we got hurt bad. Ta 
Ta-da! All right, I got another bracket right here. I don't know what it's for, but it's going to be gone. Maybe not. Are the bolts all the way through? No, sir. Well, how in the devil is a person supposed to get them off? Well, I don't think these are bolts. I sort of think these may be rivets. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get the old cut off wheel and go zipper and zapper, and <laughs> it'll be gone. Well, I got some of that stuff out of the way. Um, still got to get the brake master still and all that out. And this stack of metal, I don't know. I ain't got a clue. Got another stack of metal right here. Got to get that off. And then they look like they welded something here and then ground it off or, or torched it off. And they torched the cross member there and they torched the cross member there. And they welded something here and then torched it off. So all that's got to get ground off and then these holes I'm gonna try to weld them up and then grind them back smooth. Gotta grind them, it's just, well, it's a mess. Yes, sir. Um, let me work on that. I'll be back a little bit. Well, here's a big old pile of parts that I just got off. There's the steering box, brake master cylinder, the battery box, clutch, linkage stuff. They even tore the fuel line out. And then I got them big hunks of metal that was right cheered, right cheer. Got them off. Then we had some big old holes torched here and here. Welded them up, ground them down smoothly. And looks like it come th from the factory now. Also, when I took the battery off, uh, look here what I found behind the battery. Uh, style number. I don't know if that 40 there means it's a 1940, but I'm gonna look that stuff up and just see what it tells me. But that's pretty cool that I found that. Nephew showed up a little while ago. We're, uh, we're well, he's been working on pulling that front axle out because we got a, he's wanting to stiffen it up. We got to weld stuff to it and he's got new parts. I don't know. I just do what he tells me. Anyway, I'm gonna quit working on this. Go over and help him a little bit. Probably see y'all about Tuesday. All right, we're about ready to drop the axle out of this old Jeep. I think all you gotta do is take loose a couple of shocks and it'll be ready to come out. Here we go! What's got it? Is it's it stuck on the control. Hang on. Drag that son of a buck out. He's <laughs> a crap. <laughs> Well, it is two o'clock in the morning now, and I'm so tired and I got plum loopy, but we did get this out tonight. I reckon Monday, uh, he got a whole bunch of stuff over here that gets welded to it, and I don't know. I got to print the instructions out. Anyway, I'll see y'all about Tuesday. Well, I might show welding this. It just depends. Well, it is Monday. We've been at this for a couple hours, and I had to take my plasma cutter and cut all the brackets off. Then we had to grind the welds down and then wire wheel all the grease and dirt stuff off so we can weld it. What we're doing is basically what they call putting a truss on it, stiffening it up. And, uh, well, it goes together like a puzzle. It's got little tabs that everything fits in. Kind of hard to mess it up. Um, anyway, I'm fixing to tack all these together. The other pieces right here. That's a big, long piece. And there's several other small pieces. Anyway, 
<clears throat> got a frog in my throat. Um, gonna tack that up and then tack it here and we go to welding it up. I'll be back when I get it all done. Well, it's about 14 bazillion hours later and we finally got this thing welded up. As you can see, it's a, well, it goes together like a puzzle. It all fits together, got little, little tabs here and there. Uh, so it wasn't no measure. Well, this piece we had to finagle cause it ain't supposed to be on here with this. We had to do a little trimming, uh, but it all fits good. Looks pretty good. If you like the welds, I did them. If you don't like the welds, I didn't do them. Um, that's a little bit of a hog weld there. That was pretty deep. I should have done a root pass. Well, I did do a root pass and then should have made two separate passes after that, but it'll be just fine and dandily. He's got to do ball joints now and seals. They're here and they're here. Then it'll be ready to put back in the Jeep. That won't happen today, but we'll get it, we'll get it close. Well, we just got the front axle back in, got all the trailing arms hooked up, shocks and all that kind of stuff. He's putting all the accessory stuff on. Whilst he does that, I'm gonna get back on this old car here. What I'm gonna do, we're gonna pick that motor up with the engine hoist, set it in place. Well, I gotta get the transmission bell housing on it first. Then um, the motor mounts, you know, this is mount, or the old one was mounted on the front, like the Tri-5s do. Then they had it mounted on the back of the transmission. That ain't no good. Dude was like that when daddy first uh, put that motor in it and we was breaking transmission mounts. That's when he did the uh, bell housing mounts, um, solved that problem. Well, I'm not sure this bell housing has uh, the mounts on it. This It's like the tri fi bell housing. Well, that's probably what it is. I don't know if I'm gonna keep the front mounts and do some bell housing mounts or if I'm gonna get rid of the front mounts and just do the regular sides. That's why I got to get the motor in here and then get my uh, rack and pinion up in here and sort of eyeball things. So that's the plan right now. Let's get this motor over here in this car. Also, and oh, by the way, I forgot to tell y'all, uh, the research I did on the rear brakes, those rear ends come in 55 through 64 Chevrolet cars. Um, it's some of the Corvettes up until 62, the Corvettes had that kind of rear end. Anyway, it's very common. I found all the brake stuff. That wheel cylinder number, it didn't help me out. But that wheel cylinder, that well, I looked up like a 55, 57 Chevrolet, and then a 60, 64 Impala. Even a 69 Impala takes that exact same wheel cylinder, so it's pretty common. Uh, I can get it, and then the brakes, uh, it's about the same, 55 through 64. is 1.82 inches wide. Anyway, I got brake parts. I can go get them. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Let's get this motor in. Get out of the way. I got the cradle off the old motor. Put it on there for now. Because I want the motor about where it was as far as position wise. So we're going to put this here motor mount back on for now just to get it in position. My other handy dandy assistant is gonna bring me my transmission because my knee's still pretty bad, pretty, pretty bad. What are you doing? You're on the drum back here. <laughs> what the devil are you doing? <laughs> I'll keep you spangled right now. Get you back out of the way. Well, I had to take the fuel pump off too because it's hitting this. The original motor, that one right there, did not have a fuel pump and that's why. So if it's at all possible, I'm gonna get rid of this and we're gonna go to a side mount. Um, because if I keep this, well, I still gotta mount it back here. If I get rid of this, all I gotta do is mount cheer. So I'm gonna leave the headers on too. 
Um, I think it'll go in with them. We'll just have to see. All right, boys and girls. Let's see what we can pick her up. Well, I do believe the headers, they're going to have to come off. So it's going to hit my motor mount, so let's just go ahead and take them off. Finally, my goodness. All right, I got the motor in, but the transmission mount is not bolted in because in order for it to be bolted in, this has got to be shoved all the way back. See that slotted? When you do that, this valve cover basically rubs firewall. I don't want that. So we got to scoot it scooted up as far as it'll go. This is where it's going to be mounted. Um, I got to get my rack and pinion in here, see where it hits. See if we can do motor mounts there or if we're gonna have to do something else. But first, I'm very curious. I just wanna see what these headers look like, see if they'll fit in there or not. So let me grab them and just stick them in there with a couple of bolts. All right, will the passenger side go in? I believe it will. Might have to uh, take a spark plug out. I don't know, I don't have to do that. Yes, sir, I think that header there will do just fine and dandily. Let me get the other one in. All right, will this side go in? I'm pretty sure it will. Or maybe not. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to take the spark plug out, but I've done got it stuck in here and I can't get it out. There it is, there it is. Oh yeah, look at there. That is about right there, yes sir. Um, it may be in the way of the steering, but it does fit in the frame at least. Uh, let me get my rack of pinion up here strapped some kind of way, held in place about where it's going to be. All right, I got my rack and pinion in it. You can see it right down in there. This is basically where it's going to go. It may be a little bit lower when I'm done, not sure. Um, but as you can see, well, here's my steering shaft coming out of it right there. Well, these headers are just right in the way. So, I got to order some block hugger headers, that is for sure. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And until I get them and get them on the motor, I really don't wanna start mounting the rack and pin or anything. Cause, you know, I really need them in place. Plus, I need to get my motor mounts uh, mounted to the block. Let's go ahead and, let me go ahead and do that. Pull this header off and get my motor mounts in place and see what we got. Well, I got the header out of the way and got my motor mount on. I was trying to use square body motor mounts, but it's just, it's too large of an assembly. Um, so probably gonna have to go with some kind of aftermarket mount too. So I reckon I'm fixing to go in the house, get on the interwebs, buy me some shorty headers, buy me some kind of motor mount that I think will work. And then I gotta get uh, couplings and U joints and double D shafts for the steering. Um, probably done for the day. I think I'm gonna go to town after a while and get the uh, stuff for the back brakes. That might be what we work on tomorrow, but for now, I gotta go order some parts. Well, as you can see, the old Jeep is gone. Finally got it done. He just texted me a minute ago, said it's like 100 million percent better. There's a lot of zeros in there anyway. Uh, been pondering, thinking on this thing right here for the last few minutes. Put my distributor in because you know what? An HEI distributor is pretty big. So I put that in, make sure it wasn't gonna hit the firewall. Well, it, it rubbed a little bit. So I scooted the motor forward, got my pry bar out. We scooted her forward just a little bit more. And uh, I'll have to put my shifter brackets back on, but I might can bring the, the back end of it up a little bit more and that'll give me some more room there. I'll have to see, cause that bracket may hit the floorboard, I don't know. I think that's why they got it set so low back there. Uh, but if I have to, I think we had a lot more room between the fan and the radiator. Might have to set that radiator back up and just see what kind of room we got, but that's just, that's minor stuff. I did find me some block hugger headers for like $100 at uh, speedway.com. I'll order them tonight, and well, I got to have my, my U-joints and 
double D shafts and all that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, I wanted to show y'all a little bit of uh, rack and pinion tech. Um, if you remember, this is the rack and pinion out of the old uh, Fairmont station wagon over in the woods. This one is, I believe, the last one in the world. <laughs> um, I, I didn't think I was going to be able to find one. Well, I found one on eBay, uh, supposedly rebuilt. Bought it. Eight days later, they still hadn't shipped it. So I emailed them. I said, are you going to ship it? And, yeah, we'll get out in the morning. Well, the next night come around. Still, I, you know, I had a tracking number, but uh, UPS still didn't have it in their possession. So I said, fooey on y'all. I luckily found this on Napa and uh, got it coming. As soon as I knew it was actually coming, well, I canceled the order on eBay. It comes out of like a Chevy Cavalier, Sunbird, that type of car, you know, late 80s to early 90s. This is what a lot of hot rodders use, um, you know, if they don't go with a Mustang II front end, which I'm not. And the reason why is, well, one, it's a rear steer, meaning it's behind the wheels. Y'all saw how I had it set up. It's behind the wheel. This one, which is called a front steer, it goes up front. If you put that one in the back or put that one in the front, it'll steer backwards. You can't do that. Um, number two reason why a lot of hot rodders use these, it's got what you call center takeoff. The tie rod ends hook here, and this center part moves. Your outside stays still. Well, this one's what you call an end takeoff. Tie rod ends are on the end. If you use this on this, you're liable to have real bad bump steer um, because, well, it's just got to do with steering geometry. And you can, we can talk about that for a day probably. But just know that the reason they go with this is due to not, you know, trying to get rid of bump steer. Let me just tell you real quick. From your steering arm um, to where uh, your tie rod end connects to your rack, you want it about the same length as your bottom A arm. If you do that, you won't have any bump steer. And that's what I'm going to try to do, and that's why they use these instead of them. Because you bolt a bracket here, and in my case, I'm going to run it under and then back up, and then we'll bolt our tie rods here. And I can make them, you know, however long I want to. Uh, anyway, that's just a little bit of tech on, on power rack and, or rack and pinion steering. That is power, by the way. Yes, we are going to have power steering. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to go get some brake stuff. And uh, we'll probably put them brakes on. I'm not going to run brake lines yet because I want to get all this situated, headers, steering. Then we'll run our, uh, our lines around that. Well, I got online last night and ordered me a bunch of partages. Here's someone right here. That's shoes, brake shoes, and wheel cylinders for the back. Uh, order my headers. They should be here Friday, a couple of days from now. I ordered a, uh, an adapter coupling for the steering and a couple of U-joints and some double D shaft. I think that'll be here Friday or Saturday. Uh, seemed like I ordered something else. I don't remember. I got to study about the motor mounts a little bit more. I ain't, I ain't decided exactly how I'm gonna do them. But let me let me tell you this. See my mower over there? Well, last time I mowed, uh, when I was getting it off the trailer over here and gonna put it up, well, I heard a, I heard a clank and it started missing on one cylinder. I put it up and was going to look at it, you know, the next day. Well, of course, I completely forgot about it till just now. Uh, started it up in the garage. Of course, it was hitting on one cylinder. I said, well, let me bring it over here to the shop and we'll look at it. Well, sitting right out there, I pulled it up to this door, come in here. By the time I put my hands on that door, I heard another clank and she quit. Well, pulled both spark plugs out. Guess what? I have broke. I broke both rods. Yes, sir. Not one, but two. Neither one of the pistons is moving. You can turn it here, they don't move. Stick a screwdriver spark plug hole and you push the piston down. So, yes, sir. I do believe I broke both rods. Um, it's got about 450 hours on it. You know, that ain't a whole lot, I don't think. But I have had it probably 18 years. We'll probably pull the motor off. If it ain't busted the, the uh, crankcase or nothing, which I don't think it has because I don't see no oil dripping, I may see what a couple of rods cost and some rings that we'll, we'll ring, ring thing, put it back on. Uh, but anyway, now that I've got to tear this apart, well, I'm going to have to shut her down on this for a day or two. So I reckon uh, this will end up this week's video. Like I've told y'all before, <laughs> there's, there's always something to do before you can do something. Yes, sir. It never stops around here. It's a daily thing. <laughs> something like this happening. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to probably start tearing into this tonight. 
Uh, if y'all would like to see a rebuild video on that, uh, let me know. I might make it next week's video. I don't know. I got to do something. I got to have a mower. Yes, sir. Uh, might as well rebuild that. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe. Share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blur, blur.